now we are going to discuss about basics of Java platform. First we are going to talk about an important components of Java platform such as Java virtual machine and Java API. Then difference between JRE, JVM and JDK. Finally we will explore our first Java class. Coming to Java platform Java is both a programming language and a development platform. What is a platform? A platform is either a software or hardware environment in which a program runs. Java platform is a software environment in which you can run your Java programs. It has two components Java application programming interface Java API and JVM Java virtual machine. We will discuss one by one JVM or Java virtual machine is the base of Java platform and it is ported into various hardware based platform. Normally JVM sits on top of other operating system platforms. What is the primary function of JVM? What it does? JVM receives your Java program instructions that have been compiled into machine independent bytecodes. Let me to show one diagram. See as per the diagram here you have one Java source file called as myprogram.java. You are compiling your Java source file by the help of Java compiler. Then you will get dot class file. That dot class file contains mission independent bytecodes. Now JVM comes to the picture. It receives your Java program instructions that have been compiled into mission independent bytecodes. JVM interprets a bytecode into the machine code depends upon your underlying operating system platform and finally it will run your Java program. Here the machine independent bytecodes are not specific to either Windows or Macintosh or Linux or Solaris operating system platforms. Machine independent bytecodes are machine instructions for JVM. So JVM interprets a bytecode into the machine code depends upon your underlying operating system platform. The second component is Java API, Java Application Programming Interface. It's a large collection of ready-made software components. It is grouped into libraries of related classes and interfaces. These libraries are known as packages. Packages contain predefined classes and interfaces. For example, java.lang, java.util and java.io. These are all predefined packages. Java standardization platform allows you to develop and deploy server applications and desktop applications. Applications or programs written in the Java standardization platform can be run on wide variety of environments. It provides foundation for Java Enterprise Edition platform. Introduction to Java's architecture. Here I have four interrelated technologies of Java architecture such as the Java programming language, the Java class file format, the Java application programming interface, Java API and finally JVM or Java virtual machine. This diagram shows the relationship between these four parts of Java architecture. First one is the Java programming language. Here you have three source files. 
which are written in the Java programming language. The second one is the Java class file format. You are compiling this three Java source files by using Java compiler. You will get dot class files. The fourth one is Java virtual machine. Your dot class files contain machine independent bytecodes. JVM interprets the machine independent bytecodes into the machine code depends upon your underlying operating system platform. The third one is Java application programming interface or Java API. When you write a Java program, you will be accessing system resources such as input and output by calling the methods in the classes that implement Java API. Runtime environment or JRE is the combination of JVM and Java API. Applications or programs written in the Java platform can be run on wide variety of environments. How it is possible? See, you have one Java source code which is compiled by the Java compiler. Then you will get dot class file. That dot class file contains mission independent bytecodes. Mission independent bytecodes are not specific to either Windows or Linux or Macintosh operating system. Mission independent bytecodes are mission instructions for JVM. So only JVM needs to be implemented for each platform. But JVM will differ from platform to platform. And all the JVMs will interpret the same bytecode. So it means you can create and compile your job program in Windows machine which can be run either in Linux or Macintosh machine. As we discussed earlier, Java Virtual Machine and Java API both are components of Java platform. I would like to discuss more points about JVM and, and Java API. What's the primary function of JVM? It loads your dot class file and executes its bytecode. As per the diagram, JVM contains class loader subsystem, runtime data areas and an execution engine. Class loader subsystem is a mechanism for loading types such as classes or interfaces. It loads class files from your Java programs and from the Java API. It loads class files from the Java API which are recovered by your application. Each JVM has an execution engine which is responsible for executing the instructions contained in the methods of the loaded classes. Bytecodes are executed in an execution engine. Coming to runtime data areas, when the JVM runs your job program, it needs lot of memory to store many things such as bytecodes and other informations it extracts from the loaded class files, the objects, the program instance shades, parameters to methods, return values, local variables and other results of computations. So JVM organizes its memory into several runtime data areas. These data areas are shared by all the threads running inside the JVM. This figure shows memory areas of JVM such as method area and heap memory. What is method area? When the JVM loads your class files, it passes information about a type from the binary data contained in the class file. It places this type information into, into the method area. When the JVM runs your job program, it places the objects, the program instance shades into the heap memory. The second component is Java API. 
Java application programming interface is a large collection of ready-made software components and it is grouped into libraries of related classes and interfaces. Libraries are known as packages. Java API is a set of runtime libraries that give you a standard way to access the native resources of a host computer. How Java API helps us to access the native resources of a host computer? The class files of Java API are inherently specific to the host operating system. To access the native resources, Java API calls native methods. As you can see in the figure, the class files of Java API invoke the native methods. So your Java program doesn't have to. In this manner, the Java API class files provide a Java program with a standard platform independent interface to the underlying host. Difference between JVM, JRE and JDK. JVM becomes an instance of JRE at runtime of your Java program. JVM interprets the bytecode into the machine code depends upon your underlying operating system platform. JVM is platform dependent. It is nothing but java.exe. Here java.exe is an application launcher tool. See the diagram. This diagram shows Java Runtime Interpreter or JVM. What is JRE? Java Runtime Environment contains JVM class libraries and other supporting files. It doesn't contain any development tools such as Java compiler, debugger, etc. So here as per the diagram JRE contains class libraries other supporting files along with JVM. Actually JVM runs your job program and it also uses class libraries and other supporting files provided in the JRE. So if you want to run any job program you should install Java Runtime Environment in your system. JRE is targeted for the execution of Java files. Next one is JDK Java Development Kit. JDK contains development tools needed to develop your job programs and JRE to run your job programs. The tools include Java Compiler, Java Application Launcher, Apple Pever, etc. JDK is mainly targeted for Java development. By using JDK, you can create, compile and run your job programs. Finally, we are going to explore our Java class. The first line starts with class keyword, which is used to define a new class. Here, my first program is the new class type. The entire class definition, including all of its members, such as methods and variables, will be between opening and closing curly braces. The next line of code uses predefined main method. All your job applications begin execution by calling the main method. Main method must be declared as public since it must be called by code outside of its class when the program is started. The main method also uses static keyword. It allows main method to be called without having to instantiate an object for your class. Void keyword tells a Java compiler the main method doesn't return any specific type of data. Main method accepts one parameter which is an array of objects of string class. Inside the main method, here we are having system.out.println statement. Here the line starts with system.out. 
here system is a predefined class that provides access to a system out is the output stream that is connected to the console the string first job program or the output is done by the built-in println method